for uh, tensor manipulation. So these are just rules for operating, doing operations with tensors. So um, just as a reminder, uh, if we have a vector v and we want its components, what we do is we take the dot product with the basis vector, and that gives us the components of that vector. Okay, and for tensors we have a similar rule, but uh, for tensor we're going to need two basis vectors. So what we do is we apply s to a basis vector, let's say ej, and then that will give us a vector, and then we take the dot product of that vector with another basis vector, say ei. So i and j can be one, two, or three, and that gives us the nine components of the tensor. So there are nine numbers that are needed to define a second order tensor. And just as we have for vectors, if we have the components, we can express the vector itself in terms of the components by summing against the basis vector. So v1, e1 plus v2, e2 plus v3, e3 gives us the vector. There's a similar expression that we have when we work with tensors. And that simply says that s is equal to sij ei out of product ej. So notice that there's a double sum here. So there's a sum on i and a sum on j. So when you expand that out, there are going to be nine terms. So s11 e1 out of product e1 plus s12 e1 out of product e2, etc. And that will that's just another representation of the tensor. And, and having this representation helps you see what's going on when you do various operations and can also help you if you want to do a numerical calculation. Uh, so let's, let's look at an example. Let's just go ahead and operate on a vector v with a tensor s, and we'll use our expressions above. So I'll substitute in for s. I'll write in sij ei outer product ej. So that's the first term here. And then for v, I'll substitute in its expression also in terms of the components, so vk, ek. And the components themselves, the sij and the vjs, those are just numbers, so you can move them around wherever you want in the expression. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll just move the vk up front with sij, and then I'm left with eij outer product ej ek. So now I can use the definition of the outer product to further the calculation. And so I'll have ej dotted with ek multiplied by ei, and ej dotted with ek is just going to be the Kronecker delta here. And now I can go ahead and use the properties of the Kronecker delta to simplify this. There's a sum on the j here and a sum on the k here. So I can take my choice. I can replace the k by j or the j by k. It doesn't matter which one I, I pick. So I'll go ahead and replace the k by j, and I end up with sij vj ei. And so this is the expression now for the component expression for s acting on v. And if you look at that also, you'll see that that's basically a, a matrix vector multiplication. If you put the components of, of the tensor in a matrix and you put the components of V into a column vector, that's basically the matrix multiplying onto that column. Okay. So yeah, just view it as components, matrix vector multiplication. So let's look at uh, one another example here. So let's look at the product of two tensors, T, product with s, and we'll go ahead and do the same thing that we did with our, our, our vector case. And so I'll substitute in for t and for s using the, the component form. So I have tij ei outer product ej, so that's my t. And then I'll substitute similar expression in for s here. And just beware that you need to pick different subscripts for the sum, otherwise you'll end up with a subscript appearing more than twice, violating the Einstein summation convention. So we can do the same thing as we did before. I'll, I'll move the SKL up front with the TIJ. And then I'm going to have EI outer product EJ acting on EKEL. So I'm going to, the two vectors that are next to each other, they'll, they'll interact via dot product. So that's going to give me a delta JK. And the EI and the EL, they just come along for the ride. And now I, again, we'll use the properties of the Kronecker delta to get rid of one of the subscripts. And we'll write that as TIJ SJL EI outer product EL. So I got rid of the K using the property of the Kronecker delta.
And again, we, if we look at this and you, you look at just the component part of this result here, you'll see that's exactly the rule for matrix matrix multiplication. So just viewed as components, it's put the components of T in a matrix, put the components of S in a matrix and multiply them together and you'll get out the components of the product TS. Okay, so that, that's just another example using the same notation here. Uh, and we can go ahead and write this out more explicitly in matrix form uh, and, and that maybe helps understand what this notation here means actually. So if I write the components of EI outer product or E1 outer product E2 in a matrix, put the components in a matrix, it's going to be all zeros except for the 1, 2 component. Now we'll have the number 1. If I do E3 outer product E3, all the components are 0 except for the 3, 3 component. So you can get a feel for what this notation over here is that we're using to represent second order tensors because we're just multiplying all the terms one after another by the value of the component times one of these these tensors here which is basically all zeros except for one component being one. So if I were to expand out Sij Ei outer product Ej, first term is S11 E1 outer product E1, S12 E1 outer product E2, etc. And so each one of these terms is just simply taking the coefficient in front of it and sticking it in that slot in the matrix. So this first term here will put S11 in the 1, 1 position of the matrix. This second term here will put S12 in the second position in the matrix. So if we write that out a little bit more explicitly. So the first term moves S11 into the first position and the second term moves S22 into the first position. And you can just keep going and they'll fill in the entire uh, matrix there for the components of S. And this again, one should always remember that this is going to occur in the E basis. So if you have a different basis, E prime, let's say, then the numbers will change, but the, the concept remains the same. Okay, so those, that's just some manipulation with the notation there. Uh, there's a, a bit more notation that's useful to know. There's, some, there's a concept known as double contraction. And if you, if you have two second order tensors, you can perform an operation of double contraction, which is um, denoted with this uh, colon symbol here. So one dot on top of the other there. And what that means is you're going to contract the first index of the tensor with the first index of the second tensor, and then the second index of the first tensor with the second index of the second tensor. So with that, so there are nine terms there when you write it all out, and basically it's just going to take A11 times B11 plus A12 times B12. So you just take all the corresponding components of the tensor, multiply them together, and add the result. Uh, and if you think about that, that's kind of like what you do when you take the, the norm of a vector. And so that allows us to define also the norm of a tensor is we'll take the double contraction of it with itself and then take the square root. So that's a, a useful way of measuring the magnitude of a tensor. So that's one, one use of the double contraction notation. Um, and, and just a bit of terminology, let's, let's look back at the product of two tensors. So if I have A times B, that's AIJ, BJ, K, EI, EK, with a tensor outer product in there. Okay? And you'll notice in this expression that the J is contracted on. So we think of that as sort of a, a single contraction operation. And to make that really explicit, sometimes that people actually put a little dot between the A and B when you have this uh, tensor multiplication. So, and we call that single contraction. And then the double dot is, is the double contraction. So you contract on two indices. And, you know, even when people are looking at a tensor acting on a vector, sometimes they'll put a dot between the tensor and the vector to kind of explicitly acknowledge that when you write it in component form, there's going to be one contraction between the, the indices or the subscripts of S and the subscripts of V there. So right now to explicitly exposing the, the components, you can see it's SIJVJ, 
EI. And so there's one contraction, the J is the contracted index there, or summed upon is another synonym for that. Uh, let's go ahead and, and work out a couple of other cases. Uh, it's useful to know how the operations are going to work. Uh, so if I have a second order tensor A acting on the tensor outer product of a vector A with a vector B, then it's important to note that the operations are associative. And so I have A, or let's say capital A, I have little a outer product, uh, little b. And so I can first do the action of capital A on little a and then take the tensor outer product with b. In an initial form, what I would have, I would have a i j little a j b k. So I have a single contraction here on the j. And that's why I put the dot up here, just to make that explicit. I didn't have to. Uh, and so the result here then is, is this here. So there are two free indices, so the result is a second order tensor. We can uh, try something a little bit more complicated here. If I have two tensor outer products, so A with B and C with D, and then I do a double contraction, uh, the result is going to be the first vector dotted with the first vector, and then the second vector, B, dotted with the second vector, D, and then multiply together. And so that matches what we have over here on this side, where when we talk about double contraction, it's first index with first index, second index with second index. And you know, explicitly, the, the components of A outer product B are A, I, B, J. And then I, I'm going to want to match the first index with the first index, right? So the components of uh, CD, and let's say, are CK, DL. And I'm going to now, when I do the double contraction here, I'm going to match the first index of the second tensor, which is the C outer product D, with the first index of the A outer product B. So I make the I's match, and then I make the J's match. So written out fully, it's AICI times BJDJ. Similarly, if you have A outer product B, single contraction with C outer product D, so that's just multiplying those two second order tensors together, what's going to contract is the B with the C. So I'll have B dot C multiplied by A outer product D. And written out additionally, that will be, for instance, BICI, AJDK. So these are just some manipulations, uh, operations that you should kind of get used to. Uh, so that not all of these come up too often. You know, the basic things like multiplication comes up and between tensors and tensors acting on vectors comes up. Some of these other ones, they come up every now and then. But it's, it's a good idea to get comfortable with the, the different uh, things that can happen. And there is a logic to this whole thing. So if you, if you look at these things enough, you kind of see the pattern and you don't have to really think about it too much.